Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to see how you can install admin services for Appflow Cloud. These are the option services that we skipped in the last video. And also we will discuss the latest new changes that the Appflow Cloud team has made. So let's discuss the new updates that uh, the Appflow Cloud team has done, which might affect our uh, Appflow server that we have self-hosted by following the previous tutorial. Uh, a lot has changed. So let's discuss those new updates. So based on the previous installation that we did, one thing that we need to do is there's a new variable called FQDN, which uh, in computer science stands for fully qualified domain name. And all you need to do is uh, whatever your IPv4 uh, address is or whatever your public domain address is, you need to assign that to your FQD, FQDN variable. And then uh, the API external URL, the redirect URL, all these things will be set uh, using that FQDN as well. So that is one change that we need to uh, make sure uh, that we do. Another thing that I want to show you is uh, now I will link this document in the description. Uh, this is a document that is maintained by the official Appflow team where they will tell us all the updates that uh, are going on because you see Appflow is a rapidly developing software and they're making a lot of changes. So it's a very nice thing that they've done this, uh, which will guide us that uh, about all the new updates that come. Uh, specified a few changes here. You can scroll this down and I feel this page is also created using Appflow as you can see. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so as you can see, admin frontend moved, has moved to slash console. Uh, if you remember in the last video that we did, our admin frontend was on the slash web slash login path. Now it has moved to slash console. Also they have uh, moved the actually web to the uh, FQDN path. So basically if you hit the uh, domain name of your host machine, you will be able to see the actually web login uh, page. Okay. And uh, yeah, so they always will update this and uh, that will guide us uh, if we want to make any changes, right? So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to go in our host machine. So as you remember, I go in the folder where my SSH key is located. And once I'm inside the folder, I just paste the SSH connect command that may take a while. But as you can see, now I am inside my server. Okay, so I need to find the actual cloud repository. So here it is. And once I'm in my machine, uh, from here, what I can do is I can check all the containers that are running. So if I do docker ps slash a, I can see my containers are running. That's pretty good. What I want to do now is stop all the containers from running and update my Appflow repository to get the latest code, to get the latest changes that these guys have done, the Appflow team has done. So I will stop all the docker containers. Uh, it may take a while. As you can see, all the Docker containers have been stopped. Now what I will do is I will do a git pull. So once I've done a git pull, all the latest changes will be in my new repository. Okay, in my repository. So I do that and I also want to do a Docker compose pull to upgrade my Docker uh, containers as well. So let's wait while this happens. So as you can see, the uh, Docker services are uh, updated. And let's go to the next step. So even if we have got the latest code and we have updated our Docker services, uh, our env file must not have been updated, right? And it will not work as well because uh, because it is old, right? So we want to remove that env file and we want to copy this uh, deploy.env file and create a new env file. But before you do that, make sure that you get all your client secrets and your client IDs uh, in a safe uh, in a safe space. So I have just pasted them here in my notes. And uh, then what you can do is uh, after removing the env file, so I'll do rmrf.env to remove that env file. Uh, and I can see that there is no env file. Oh, sorry. As you can see, what I will do is I will copy that uh, deploy.env file into a new env file. And from there, I can open that new env file. And as you can see, this is a new env file. Uh, and the uh, fully qualified domain name variable is here which we have to set with our latest, uh, not our latest, which you have to set with our domain name. So go on your EC2 uh, machine, copy your public IPv4 DNS. And then what you can do is update this uh, variable and make it point to your domain name. So that's what I have done. I'll press escape to go in the read mode of Vim. And you can see uh, there are a few changes here, but what I want to show you is the AppFlow uh, external URL variable. Oh, yeah, here you can see that the AppFlow external URL has been set using the FQDN that we just uh, provided. And uh, 
And as you can see, the GitHub OAuth uh, also will use that API external URL, which is set here automatically, right? We want to update the client secret as well. So if you had copied them, you can now paste them here so that you don't have any problem with authentication. So yeah, now this is also updated. Another thing I forgot is to update this false to true. All right, so, all right, so let's exit this file. To exit, press colon wq. Now, after we have got all the updates, we just want to run our Docker daemon and make sure that we run all the Docker containers. So you can see that uh, there are a lot of containers that we're running, but we are not running the uh, extra services such as Portainer, Portainer and uh, PG Admin. So let's see how we can do that. But uh, before that, let's just check all the new, if, if our actual server is running or not, right? So what I'll do is I'll uh, get the path and I'll hit that path. So I will go on the public DNS that we have. And as you can see, uh, right off the bat, this page opens up. Now this is the Appli web login page. So this is the client sites uh, login page, which uh, your users will be able to see. And as you know, we've already set it up uh, authentication with GitHub. So you can continue uh, with GitHub and then you have to choose a GitHub account and then you'll be able to log into the client app or the web app, okay? And uh, yeah, your users can use it from here directly. If you want to log into the admin portal of uh, your app, then what you can do is uh, get rid of all of this. Again, I'm gonna say HTTP and then you can hit the slash console path. So if I hit the console path, you can see Affiliate Cloud admin portal is now open and here uh, you can sign in using uh, your admin credentials. Now, where are your admin credentials? Uh, I'm sorry, I did not mention them earlier, but they are in your uh, env file. So uh, in your Affiliate Cloud, uh, if you do cat env, you will be able to see that just right before the OAuth setup, you have the go to admin email and the go to admin password. Now, when you are creating your .env file, you want to uh, update this to specific to your need. Uh, definitely update the password because uh, this is the, like the weakest password in the world. Uh, but for this demo, I'm going to keep it as is. So yeah, admin uh, example.com, that was the email and the password was password. Make sure you update that. Uh, by the way, you can also change your password from here. So I highly recommend that you do that. And from here, if you click the admin, you will be able to see this UI where you can check the PG admin. Now, all it will do is it will try to uh, go to the PG admin path. But as you know, we haven't set it up PG admin and we haven't set it up the uh, portainer. So it will just return Nginx bad gateway, right? Because we haven't uh, set it up and we'll see how we can set them up. Okay. So before we start the setup, uh, for those of who, who don't know about PG admin and portainer, so PG admin is nothing but a tool that is going to help us uh, to manage our Postgres database using a nice uh, graphical user interface. And the same uh, with Portainer as well. Portainer is going to help us uh, manage our Docker containers, images, networks, and volumes. Uh, now, this is important because, you know, not everybody is familiar with uh, the CLI commands or uh, maybe not comfortable with them. So it's always a good thing to have, uh, you know, a GUI running. And plus it helps in collaboration as well. So if you have multiple people who are managing uh, your Affiliate uh, self-hosted instance, then uh, it's a good idea that you make sure that you have Portainer and uh, PG admin. Okay. Uh, so to get them started, all we need to do is uh, we need to go in our host machine and uh, here you can see that all the containers are running, but uh, these are the containers that were running from the Docker Compose file, right? If you went to the documentation, uh, what we need to run instead is the Docker Compose extras.yml file. Now this file, if you can see here, uh, actually includes the Docker Compose YML file. So when you run the Docker Compose extras.yml file, Docker Compose, all the services inside the Docker Compose file will also run with it, okay? And uh, from here you can remove unnecessary services if you don't want. So for example, I don't want tunnel uh, container to run. But uh, for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it and then I will uh, stop it using the container, uh, okay? So how to do this? Uh, well, first of all, you can stop the, stop the existing containers that are running. So this command will stop all the uh, Docker containers that are running. What I will do now is I will remove them. So I have removed all the Docker containers as well. And now if I run Docker PSA to check all the running containers, you can see that nothing is running, nothing is uh, there. Okay. Now what I want you to do is uh, instead of running the Docker compose up D uh, command, I will paste in this command. 
And in this command, what I'm doing is using the file flag. I'm telling Docker to specifically run this file. And uh, as you know, the slash D means uh, run it in a detached state. So it doesn't need to be running on the uh, on the first screen that you've seen. Okay. So I paste that command. I hit run. And now you can see that not only our previous services such as Nginx, Minio, Postgres are running, but also other services such as tunnel, PG admin, Portainer 1 and Portainer 8 are also started and running. All right, everything is up and running. Now, what we can do is after a few minutes, we can actually hit our public IPv4 DNS. Uh, let me log out from here. And we can hit the slash PG admin path from here. And uh, it's not running yet because it might take a few minutes to actually get up and running. Let's check the uh, Portainer. Portainer is running. Let's see that. Okay, all cool. So Portainer is up and running. Uh, that's very good. And the first thing it asks is it asks for your username and password. Now another again, I have uh, forgotten to tell you guys that the password Portainer and PG admin is going to be inside your .env file. And you may want to change that, right? Because right now it's going to be something like password. So let me check where uh, is it saved. Uh, yeah, this you can see. Portainer's username is admin, and the password is just password one two three four. And similarly, PG admin's default email or username is admin, at example, and the password is just password. So make sure when you are running it, uh, make sure that you change the password. Uh, if you have been following along, then uh, make sure that you re uh, like reopen this file and uh, make the changes, and then again run the containers again. Okay, your Docker containers, right? So I log in, and I have logged into my uh, Portainer, and here you can follow these instructions. Uh, you can see all the other things. So here you can add another user. So in your organization, maybe you want someone else also the access of uh, running and stopping these Docker containers. You can do that from here. You can add that user. You can also assign them like roles. Uh, I'm not very familiar with Portainer, so I'm going. I'm not going to uh, explain a lot of things here. Uh, but uh, yeah. This is Portainer, and you can see that uh, on my machine, uh, about 14 containers are running, and one container is already stopped. I think 11 containers are up and running very nicely. So I will hit Live Connect, and you can see yes, two are healthy, 13 are running, one is stopped. Uh, you can see the memory that they are using, about one GB. You can see the volumes that uh, have been used, and you can see that there are unused volumes as well, uh, which you can basically clear. You know, so this is the advantage of running Portainer, right? And see, I successfully cleaned up uh, a lot of unused volumes, okay? So that's pretty cool. Let's see the containers that are running. So Portainer init somehow is not running. So what I can do is maybe I can restart it. So here you have the option to restart it. So I'm gonna hit restart and it will be restarted. Another thing that I said I will do is I will uh, get rid of the tunnel uh, container. So I select the tunnel and I say stop. Right, and it gets stopped, and then I can maybe also remove tunnel. Awesome, right? So because I was not using it, and I was able to remove it. Some problem is occurring with the port in the rate. I'm just going to ignore it for now, and let's just see if we can uh, run the PG admin as well. Okay, so I'm going to hit HTTP and PG admin. Let's go, and you can see PG admin's login page is here. And uh, as discussed earlier, the password can be found in your .env file, and the password for PG admin is password. The email or the user account is admin dot example dot com admin admin example. So let me put that in here, and let me log in. Okay, and you can see your PG admin console here, which is running, and uh, you can see the database from here. You can visualize. Oh, again, another thing, beautiful. Uh, after even connecting, you have to still enter a password. Now this time you have to enter the password of the host this, okay? Which is essentially different from the PG admins password. Uh, now in our env file, we have just used the same password. If you scroll up, I think, yeah, at the very top, uh, you can see the Postgres password is here and you may want to change that. Mm. So it's not the password of PG admin, it's the password of Postgres. And if you want, you can save it. So I'm going to say, okay, and then you'll be able to see your database okay so that's pretty cool and i hope you understood everything here and uh, i hope you were fine uh, following along let's check let's log into our okay how about i log out from here first okay i've logged out and then what i want to do is 
I want to sign in the admin console and from there I want to see this service is running. So you don't always have to, uh, you know, like enter your host machine's address and then specify the path of PG admin. You can also basically uh, click this thing and go on the respective page, right? So, okay, I can go to PG admin, here I can go to Portion as well. Uh, make sure that you always uh, review these self hosters upgrade nodes because all the new changes will be mentioned here. And if you have any questions, if you have any doubt, they have a Discord channel which I'm going to link in here. So, just if you don't have the link, so actually Discord. So, this is their Discord channel. And a bunch of people are there, they're always ready to help you guys. So, make sure if you have any questions, post them here. And uh, I hope you have a good time. Thank you.